times I'm like, right. there's so many people here. This is like, yeah. Thing. Yeah. that's just like, but I liked it usually, but I, but I get it. Well, after Dallas, I mean, you also, we worked on like glitter with Aaron Spelling. You were on Melrose Place yeah. for three. Like, mm-hmm. did you, what was it like being on an Aaron Spelling project? Did oh, you- I, I got to tell you, I knew Aaron. I, I did the original Burke's Law back in 1964 with Aaron. And I did an episode then. He never forgot me. He remembered me all those years. And I I remember many, many times I would audition for him. And, you know, he said, I'm going to find a project for you. I'm going to find something for you. I, I'm looking, I'm looking. And um, Glitter came along and I was contracted to CBS at the time. I was under contract to CBS and Lorimar. And Aaron made a deal for me to do Glitter he went to CBS and said, I know I'm ABC, but I need to borrow her, you know. And so I was doing two television shows, two network shows at the same time on two different networks, which nobody had done. And Aaron was so loyal and so wonderful. He signed me to that contract and he said, I'm going to make sure that you're on The Love Boat every year, Fantasy Island every year. Um, hotel every year. He made he made your life secure in the sense that you're not forgotten. And you know you saw that with all the old actors that he brought in. And he was so wonderful and respectful and very, very honored that any of these older actors would would come on the show. He made them feel so special. He made all of us feel so special. Out of everybody in the business, he was a class act. I mean, a really class act. I mean, it was a, it kind of got to be a joke at one point where you'd have 20 motorhomes lined up in front of the sound stage and every star had their motorhome, you know. And, and you'd get silver delivered to you as a gift and you'd have red roses in your trailer in the morning. I mean, it was fabulous. I mean, I can't, I can't say enough about Aaron. He was, he was so good. And he remembered me from the time I was 10 years old. Wow. And he did. I mean, he, you were on Love Boat a lot. You were on Fantasy Island. Ho, Tommy, he, he yep. made good, you know, it wasn't just lip service as we know no, can happen in this no, business. It wasn't. Do you have memories? I mean, I'm a huge, I'm a huge Dallas fan, but I'm a huge Melrose Place fan too. I mean, I know it was a short lived experience yeah. for you, but like, do you have memories of working with like Patrick Muldoon and Josie Bissett and being on Melrose? Oh, for that? sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had, I had not done a lot of television for a while at that point. And I came back to, to do it and, and, and television had changed a lot. You know, there was, there was, it was faster. It was Okay, cut, move on. You didn't you didn't delve into the scenes where you'd go, you know what? Let's try that again another way. They didn't have time for any of that. So everybody there was pretty much married to their characters. They knew what they wanted to do. Um, Patrick and I got along great, even though it was, you know, it was a relationship that was <laughs> very tense, but we got to laugh a lot and do a lot of things. Um I can't remember what's the girl with the the girl that was the evil girl with the red Laura hair. Laura Leighton. Yes. Yes. And she was great. She was wonderful. And she was really good at what she did. And so, you know, I had a great experience. I, I liked doing that show. And Heather, of course, I had known for years before. And we did Night of a Hundred Stars together and just our eyes were like this backstage at Rockefeller. I mean, at um, uh, um, Radio City. Either. Yes, Radio City. <laughs> you, now, see, there's another story. Backstage at a hun- at a night of a hundred stars. Oh no! <laughs> what? Could you imagine a hundred movie stars and at least fifty or sixty women? in the Rockettes dressing room, and margaret I mean, you've got, oh, where do I begin? Heather and I sat in a corner and just went, wow. 
would you have a moment of like, what are we, <laughs> what are we doing here? Or let's just observe and let's we just did. take notes. We did. Because one of the stars who shall remain nameless, but you would know because she was on a big soap as well, stands in the doorway and she, she looks at everybody in the doorway and she's got her hand on her hip and she goes, I'm not dressing in here with all these nobodies. And another actress that you would know turned around and she goes, and who the F are you? <laughs> and Heather and I were in the corner going, no, we thought this is going to be good. It was great. Jimmy Stewart going up on the elevator with Jimmy Stewart, uh, sitting in the front row. They gave us all bakery tickets with a number on it for the finale. And they called Jimmy's number and he didn't answer because he was older and everything. And he finally looked at his number and he goes, oh, uh, 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 here. <laughs> it was a Jimmy Stewart moment. And it was just, it was amazing. And you had Dustin Hoffman and you had Robert De Niro all in the same place. I mean, unbelievable. They don't you, do that anymore. That they, they, they tried at one point. I mean, it's not the same thing to revive like battle of the network stars. Like that didn't really last. Like that was a great, I mean, they, I, I don't even, now I say probably like 20 years ago, but they, they, they did try maybe like 15 years yeah. ago to do a battle of the network stars, but you know, but that was, that was, I mean, probably once in a lifetime you, you could do that because they did night of a hundred stars one and night of a hundred stars two. And just for days, you're in rehearsal, just trying to get everything coordinated and outfitted and all the personalities. Oh, my gosh. Unreal. Well, I'm just picturing a huge soap star coming in and saying, <laughs> I'm not dressing her. My mind goes to Joan Collins, but that's OK. You don't have to confirm or disconfirm. I didn't I'm say just, a word. You did it. I'm just telling <laughs> you where my mind goes when I think of nighttime soaps and, you know, but you had Heather there. I mean, so, you know, you had your partner in crime, right? I did. And Heather, Heather was, she was younger than me and she was more of the white eyed innocent, you know, she's like, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. But it was, it was, it was crazy. I shared a table with, remember the singer, Laura Branigan? Yeah, Gloria. Laura Branigan. Okay, so because I was a Brittany and she was Branigan and we were at the same mirror you can imagine, you can imagine how that went with, you know, the other actresses sharing a mirror. Anyway, I asked her, I, I was doing my makeup and everything. And I said, oh, do you need to, do you need to get over here? Cause I can get out of the way for a minute. And she goes, honey, this is the best I'm going to look. I don't need it. <laughs> I said, great. <laughs> See, so you had high maintenance, low maintenance. You had everything at once exactly. there. Exactly. Do you, is there a part of the business, like I know you've written books, like you said, you did like guest starring, like, you know, I'm married with children and the nanny. Mm -hmm. And like, is there a part of the business like you haven't done that you really still want to do? No, I, I did theater. I did a, 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 a six month tour of MAME and, um, you know, every night, different city and had a ball doing that. Um, I've done, I did about four shows like that and loved that. Uh, hard work, really hard work. But I did features. I had the childhood career. I did early TV. I did, you know, I got to do Westerns, the great Westerns of the 60s, like Rawhide and Gunsmoke and Daniel Boone and all that stuff. I got to work. I got to work in the golden age of Hollywood, pretty much when West Side Story was being done, when the Music Man was being done, Gypsy was being done, all of that surrounded me. So I look back and, and I think about everything I have experienced working with Alfred Hitchcock in The Birds, um, all of that stuff. And then as I as I grew up and I and I got the second career, the second life, so to speak, you know, I moved to New York. I was a model. I lived in Japan as a model. I sold product on Home Shopping Club. I was a spokesperson. I was a journalist, you know, I mean, commentator. So I've really done everything that I want to do. 